everyone, it's Brad here, and I'm going to go ahead and get started on working on getting through this Necroz series, because it's going to take a lot of time for me, and if you're going to want to watch it completely through, it's also going to take a lot of time for you to watch, so I thought I'll just start getting out some more videos, so you can go ahead and get started on that. So, this video is going to be all about managing your resources throughout a churn. So I'm not just talking about managing uh, how to have resources for next churn. I'm talking about how to use your resources best this churn, and uh, that can lead to setting up for next churn, and it can also just lead you finishing off your opponent. So the most important thing about Necroz, I would say, is being able to plan how to get to all the spells you need in a churn. So if I'm going for an OTK, most likely I'm going to need to access all three of my spells. And there are multiple ways you can do this. And obviously, you only get one search off Colossal as a churn. And you want to plan how you get to that. Whether it's a Rota, whether it's a Shurit, or whether or not uh, it's a card like Brionic or Preparation of Rites that you kind of want to hold on to and not use on Colossus. But uh, there's a lot of ways that you can plan to get there. Um, one of the better options is uh, using Manju. So a lot of people just use Manju and Senju as pretty much the same sort of card. But Manju is a lot more powerful because you're able to grab one of the three spells. So something I'll usually do is if I need spells, I'll go Manju. Manju will search for a Kaleidoscope. I'll use a Kaleidoscope to summon... Or, sorry, I didn't mean to drop that in there. Summon a Unicorn by sending a Herald of Arclight, which will search for an additional spell. So that's a way that I get out uh, two spells out of my deck for pretty much free. So that way you can get the spells to your hand if you really need them. And then you'll be able to use Colossus Effect to get to the third. Another great way that you should consider using is making a rank 4 such as with Senju and a Unicorn. And after you summon the Unicorn, you'll go to a Diamond Dire Wolf. And with Diamond Dire Wolf, you'll be able to clear your monsters on your side of the field, as well as clear a back row or a monster on your opponent's side of the field. And then you'll be able to banish the spell that you use to summon Unicorn along with Unicorn to get another search for a spell. So that's another way you can get access to spells if you need to. That's also really good if you have like two or three spells in your grave and you just want to get access to your grave, but you have like a rank four or a level four just stuck on your field. Really, really great way to get to it. So um, that's about all I have to say about the spells. It's just know um, that you can't just search like three times with a Colossalist. You have to uh, plan how you get all the other spells. So uh, the next thing I want to cover is using Brionic uh, to its full potential. So Brionic can search for literally any Necroz monster. So this is going to be able to grab pretty much 60% of your deck. So uh, <laughs> it can grab almost anything you need. So to use uh, Brionic to its full potential, you need to grab your finishing piece that nothing else will be able to grab for you. You don't want to always use it on grabbing like Shurit. Because if you use Brionic for Shurit... When you go to continue your play, you're going to have very limited options unless you do need the spell. So sure, it could grab our level 3 Colossalus, and then you can get another spell. That's one good situation where you can use Brionic for sure. It, But if you already have enough spells you need, and your opponent's not Trishable, otherwise you just go Trish because it's obvious. Uh, Brionic for sure, it's great. Um, so you don't want to find the best way to use your Brionic to... Uh, usually, it's want, you want to grab... A uh, card like Decisive Armor to put on big damage and pop back row. Or you want to get a Valk to put on big damage as well. Another good use for Brionic is grabbing Unicor. So you can go Unicor into a uh, Kaleidoscope and send either 4 or 12 just to put on a lot more damage as well. Because if you send 4, it's a free summon and you get to search again. So you can pretty much search for what shirt, what a, or sorry excuse me, for what Brio would have searched for, except for Shurit and any other effect monster of ne the Necroz. So um, that's one way you can uh, think about how you want to use Brionic the best. Another way is uh, with Rhoda. So Rhoda is going to be pretty much the best way for you to use Brionic, and it's not, it involves not drawing Brionic. Um, so 
you want to rota for your Shuret, and then you're going to go ahead and want to use uh, Necroz Cycle to summon anything from your graveyard or something from your hand, if needed, to send tribute your Shuret and summon a monster. So let's say in this case we summon a Valk. All right. And then we're going to get Shuret Search, and we'll be able to search for Bryonic. And off this Bryonic, we're going to be able to go into a multitude of things, because now we are not uh, reliant on grabbing Shuret uh, to have access to Shuret. We can just use something like Mirror to get a really easy large summon. So Bryonic will be able to grab pretty much anything we need, and it'll be able to be it as versatile as we need it to be. So that's one of the best ways we can use Bryonic. Um... And you just got to kind of think about that every time you start your turn. Just how can I use my resources best this turn? So another thing I want to talk about is Valk. And Valk is like kind of an odd way to go about your turn. So if you end your turn with a Valk and I don't know what you're playing against, somehow it survives to your turn. One thing I would suggest, even though it seems counter uh, intuitive, if you have a ritual spell in your grave or two, you tribute your Valk off and another monster and draw two, because that's going to open up your graveyard to get two ritual spells, or however many ritual spells you can get out of it, as well as it's going to give you option to maybe drawing into cards like Manju and Senju, which will open up your plays tremendously. So... Um, if you can start your turn off by Valking a, or using Valk's effect to clear your board, that's a great way to start your turn. You, you pretty much drew three to start, and then you get to search uh, either one to three more. So it's a really, really, really positive play. There's, like, no downsides to it. Um, another thing I want to talk about. So uh, we've talked about using Brionic to its full potential. Sometimes you aren't going for game, though, and you just end with a, like, you summon a Valk, and you want to just draw into some side cards, so this is, like, game two or three. You'll use Brionic, and a great thing you can do is add, uh, if I can find it, add Sorcerer. And then with Valk, you'll be able to tribute one or two. Uh, you'll probably want to tribute two. I don't know who you'll be tributing, but you'll tribute this great Sorcerer, and then you'll be able to search for a Unicorn. And now, the reason why this is just so great is you didn't use your Shuret yet, and you still have access to Bryonic next turn because you can discard your Unicorn to get your Bryonic. So, uh, you have a Shuret left in deck, which is very powerful, uh, because chances are if you're going to be drawing as much as you do from drawing from Valk, you're going to draw into the Shuret itself or into one of your Rotas. So, you'll be able to Shuret and get uh, another spell or Trishula, and then you'll be able to take advantage of Bryonic's effect as well, and pretty much seal the game for you. So those are just some few points that I feel are needed uh, to talk about. Those are pretty much going to conclude this after I talk about this one thing actually that I remembered. Uh, preparation of rights. So I've always been, um, like, I've always made this mistake, and if you listen to this i i don't know if it'll make sense to you just yet but after you play it for a while you'll understand what i'm talking about so preparation of rights is obviously an amazing card and you want to get the full potential out of it by adding a monster from your deck and a ritual spell from your graveyard but sometimes when you're about to go for game um it is better just to get the search off a of a ritual monster because it puts you in a better position than if you wait and add a spell back because if you know you can put game on board, adding the spell back that you've already used isn't going to do much for you. In fact, it will do next to nothing, unless if you have to summon a Gunganir, because then Gunganir could discard the spell. But what I'm saying here is if I have a Kaleidoscope or something like that, and just to finish my uh, to finish my opponent off to get game on board, I need to get a Unicorn so I can use my Kaleidoscope to its full potential. I should just go ahead and use Preparation of Rights to add my Unicorn, because this will open up options for me to put game on board and just seal the game for me. When, if I used Kaleidoscope to summon something by tributing actual monsters I have, I'm not going to put on game most likely, And but I will get to use Prep to its full potential, but would you rather use a, one card to its full potential or potentially seal the game for yourself? So... It's just a little thing that I've picked up when I've been playing. 
And uh, that's about all I have to talk about. So, um, next episode is probably going to be about... Um, you know, I'm not sure. It's going to mainly be about just playing Necroz, I guess. This was about uh, maintaining your resources throughout one turn. I'll probably go into some depth about how, how you should like set up for next turn and um, multiple turns down the end of the game. But, yeah, that's about all I have for today, guys. So, I'm going to probably start posting some more like duels on DN um, just because I have been doing a lot of them and I've been recording them and commentating them and I actually have quite a few good ones right now so expect to see some of those if you want to come watch me duel or talk to me uh, my dueling network account is named Yu-Gi-Oh plus one uh, with spaces in between it just like our channel so you can go ahead and do that uh, expect more videos for uh, teammates because they are now starting to make videos and you'll see them pretty soon i know joe is going to be talking about cliff warts and i think he's going to do some discussion on the arg format uh just tell me how you guys feel about us talking about that too uh we don't have to just talk about konami format we can talk about arg format a bit on here too and if you're interested in that we might do that so i'll see you guys later uh bye